All right, welcome everybody to our little Bible study, and we're going to be covering 2 Corinthians chapter 4 today, and um, have a good time in the Word of God during this um, Christmas season. It's a very busy season, and I know some of you will enjoy this after the holidays, this uh, teaching. So let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, in Jesus' name we come before you, and we thank you, Lord, for your precious word to us. Um, the King James Bible is so perfect, and um, we thank you that we can know you through your word and what you are doing, have done, and will do. And I pray that you would help us all to see and understand and be enlightened as to what you are saying in your word and to share it with others in an easy to understand way so that the body of Christ will be equipped to um, tell other people how to be saved and what you are doing today in the dispensation of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, Modern Bible versions are kind of like this, this little toothpick here. So this little toothpick is like the New King James Bible, the NIV Bible, and the NASB, and all those other versions. But the King James Bible is like this sword right here. Uh, this, I think, is a samurai sword. And I think you have to hold it with two hands. Okay, so we have to fight against Satan's lies with the truth of the Word of God. And would you want to use a toothpick? What do you say? What do you say, Maureen and Patty? Do you want to use a toothpick? No. no. Or do you want to use the King James Bible? King James. You want to use the King James Bible, the perfect Word of God. That's how we fight Satan. We fight him, his lies, with God's truth. Okay, so let me put this back in the shield. I have to borrow this from my son. Uh oh, Ooh, put it careful. back the wrong Be way. Careful. <laughs> I know, I don't want to cut anything off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so um, I. I want to just go over what the lesson is today. Where's my pointing stick? Uh oh, I don't have my pointing stick. I'll have, have to use, use a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I can use the sword. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll use the sword. Okay. All right. So today we're doing Second Corinthians chapter four, and um, it's about the treasure or our power is the life of Jesus in our earthen vessels. And um, verses 1 through 18, it, Paul was able because the life of Jesus was in him. And the life of Jesus is in us. Um, he is our power supply. And um, Satan doesn't want us to know that. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but we believe what God says in his word. So... Um, I have, here is the earth, here is the first heaven, uh oh, left out the B, E N. okay, let me fix that, heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. So we find out in um, 2 Corinthians chapter um, 12, Paul lets us know that there's three heavens. And um, there has been rebellion in heaven and on earth. Satan uh, was the cherub that covered the throne of God. And he led a rebellion in heaven against God and convinced one third of the angels to follow him because he thought he could be like the most high God. And so, God threw Satan and one-third of the angels out of the third heaven 
And God put, if you can look here, here there, he put a sea of ice uh, 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 there to seal off the third heaven so that Satan and his um, cohorts could not get into the third heaven now. And we find that in Job 37, 18, and we will look in, at that a little bit later. So Satan now is the prince of the power of the air in the second heaven, and um, he has uh, um, he is also the god of this world, which we will discover today. Mm. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, so before we go there, let's um, go over. Um, the review sentences in 2 Corinthians. So, uh, chapter 1, God comforts us so we can comfort others. And chapter 2, forgive the repentant brother and Satan's devices. Then chapter 3 was, His Spirit makes us able ministers of the New Testament. And um, so... I'll leave those up there for a little bit so that people can write those down if they want to. So this flower is demonstrating God's creative powers and infinite wisdom and how amazing he is in his, you know, what he can make. Mm -hmm. But... This is, flower can also represent us in that, see this, this one over here mm -hmm. is fading. Mm -hmm. And our outward man, we will find out today, is fading and dying. Mm -hmm. But our inward man, our soul and our spirit, is being renewed day by day in his word. And mm -hmm. so, um, we will think about that. We hope we will be a nice perfume to God. While we have these fleeting lives. Okay, so now, before we get into all this, I better put the sword away again, or I might trip over it, or something. Um, I just want to show um, how I'm going to offer a little Christmas present to people uh, this year. Um, God's Secret is going to be available on um, Kindle form between Christmas and New Year. So from the 26th to January 2nd, God's Secret and also, so God's Secret book, which is covers the, uh, the Bible in 100 pages, will be available on Kindle because, and so will um, Romans between Christmas and New Year. So it's very handy for people like in South Africa. I have a lot of friends in South Africa and so they can get it on Kindle. So you you might if you want to get your last minute Christmas gift being a Kindle Fire. Now, so the Kindle Fire comes in different sizes and um, I'm going to show you that you can set your Kindle Fire to um, as text to speech and you have this incredible woman uh, voice let's see the goal is for all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth 1 Timothy 2 4 the book is also designed to be a tool for the members of the body of Christ to share right division with their loved ones to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery Ephesians 3 9 are you ready to discover the mystery of God's secret? The revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Romans 16, 25. Ford, as he promised God has preserved his word in... Okay, so you can see that you can listen. Um, the um, book, God's Secret, is specially formulated for Kindle, so that you can listen to the whole book in about three hours mm -hmm. and uh, you can the Kindle is so great because you can take it anywhere without the need for Wi-Fi 
So you can listen to it in your car. Um, you can, you know, for, for Christmas I bought my husband a, a little jacket where you can stick a cell phone or a Kindle into a pocket. Oh. So when you're on a walk, you can have your little earbuds in and listen to it. Or you can put it on speaker, put the Kindle on speaker and listen to it while you're folding your clothes, you know, doing your laundry or cleaning your kitchen. Um, so I know that um, Romans is not um, really that great. To, it's better to have the book. And when you see the Kindle of um, God's Secret, you'll want to get the book too. You know, because it's really nice to have the book with a li really light, big pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. And all the books have pictures. And then we have 1 Corinthians, and we're working on 2 Corinthians. And I also recommend, through the book of books, we're going to be doing our homework at the end of this lesson today, in um, by Lori Verstegen. So to find her book or my book, just put in either Marianne Manley or Lori Verstegen in the search bar um, on Amazon. And I recently sent two books to my relatives in Sweden well, going through Amazon UK. So this deal will be available on the Amazon UK as well as the Amazon in the United States for the uh, Kindle version for one ninety-nine cents for uh, between Christmas and New Year. So. Um, Let's start into our study a little bit, but I really wish I had my pointer. Um, that's okay. I'll point with my finger. Okay, so um, can, can you see, follow me in case I, I need to move? Okay, so... It I'll, might be in the drawer. Oh, maybe it's in the drawer. No, it's, the drawer is too short. How about behind me? The, it could be behind the chart. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> we got the pointer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was I was talking about um, Satan's rebellion mm -hmm. and man's uh, uh, rebellion and mm -hmm. how God has had to contend with all this rebellion mm -hmm. when that's not what he wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's not what he deserves. And he's going to get what he deserves, which is everyone glorifying him in heaven and earth that believe on him. So um, Adam and Eve, he, uh, Satan caused Adam, can they see me? Oh. It, to sin when he said, a question God's word, yea have God said, and they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and disobeyed God. So, um, but God promised a redeemer, remember? Mm -hmm. Then uh, during um, no, the time of Noah, um, Satan corrupted the human race, and also the animals mm -hmm. were corrupted by him. And it, it's very interesting because, um, you know, the the world, you know, that both had corrupted themselves, mm -hmm. and so um, he God sent the flood, and then at the Tower of Babel, which is right here on our chart. Um, mankind corrupted themselves because Satan convinced them that they could should worship creation, even themselves, mm -hmm. that they should ver worship idols, and instead of the Creator. So God sent uh, all the nations aside, and He made His own nation out of one man, and His name is. Abraham. So Abraham um, was pro uh, given promises, uh, at four promises, in, which is mentioned in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. He was given, um, he's going to have descendants, he's going to have a land, he's going to live forever. Um, well, that, that's a little later in Genesis, um, in chapter 13, I believe. Um, and um, so Abraham, you know, those who bless him will be blessed, and those who curse him will be cursed. So that's the Abrahamic covenant. And then later, um, God wanted to use 
Abraham and his people to show the rest of mankind what God does for those who love him. Mm -hmm. And they were to be a channel of blessing to all other nations. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then, um, added to the wonderful promises that God gave to Abraham was the law of Moses. So, um, while Moses was on Mount Sinai getting the law, mm -hmm. Satan was busy getting the people at the foot of the mountain to worship the golden calf. So, um, when Adam sinned, the world, um, the, um, you know, the earth be went to s Satan by default. And then when the people sinned, when Moses was getting the law, the people of Israel, they became Satan's lawful captives. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jesus is going to redeem them from bondage to Satan and sin later. So then uh, D David, Satan convinced David also to sin. And um, David was promised that uh, from his descendants would come the, the king that Isaiah had um, also spoke about in I, Isaiah um, 9, 6. And we have Isaiah seven fourteen. the virgin shall conceive and bear a child, right? And and then in Isaiah 9, 6, um, in, he should be called, um, he is the, you know, the God with us, the son, the son of God, okay. the son of God. Unto you a, a son is given. Mm -hmm. So, um, then with, there was 400 years of silence. And this is very interesting to know that the Apocrypha that was at one point with, between the New and uh, Old and New Testament was written during the 400 years of silence. Mm -hmm. And so we know that none of that was God speaking because mm -hmm. God was being silent. Mm -hmm. So God did not inspire those, uh, that book, those books in the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. So then, um, after 400 years of silence, it was broken by John the Baptist, the forerunner to Jesus Christ, and Satan was busy, he had been very busy, because he knew from Daniel's timeline when um, the Messiah would come, mm -hmm. and so he had gone ahead and made a mess of Israel. So when Jesus came, there was a lot of um, demons the mm -hmm. devil possessed people. Mm -hmm. So Jesus came and he um, was crucified by his people. He, uh, he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And um, then he ascended into heaven after 40 days. And he had promised the Holy Ghost to come down on Peter. And it did. And the little uh, flock of 120 believers in the upper room. And so Peter and his group were given an, uh, another chance to proclaim that Jesus Christ was the King of the Jews, the Messiah, to sit on the throne of David. And, uh, but they uh, stoned Stephen after uh, the end of the year. And that was the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And so then, um, at that point, God put Israel as a nation aside and um, saved Saul, who, who is Paul, um, of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. And he put, paused Israel's program, and they, they fell, as it mm -hmm. says in Romans 11, 11, 12. They stumbled at the cross and they fell at, um, with the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And um, he, you know, paused or postponed the kingdom mm -hmm. and inserted the mystery. And the mystery is all about that God is forming another group of people apart from Israel to dwell in heaven and in the heavenly places and populate heaven. 
during the dispensation of grace. And those people that believe the gospel given to Paul will become members of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is going to live in heaven because God, in the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to populate the heaven with the body of Christ believers. Mm -hmm. After the rapture, God will continue his... Um, can they still see me, mm -hmm. Maria? He will continue his dealings with Israel. And there will be, once again, a distinction between God's people, Israel, the circumcision, and the uncircumcision, everybody else. But during the dispensation of grace, everyone is the same, treated the same. So, in the middle of the tribulation, the tribulation is going to be sent upon the nation of Israel because they disobeyed what God said in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. He's, um, so they're going to have a, a course of punishment, and that is what the tribulation is. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the tribulation, Satan will be cast out of the second heaven. Remember we saw the heavens? Mm -hmm. Satan and his angels will be cast out of, um, the fallen angels, will be cast out of the second heaven onto earth. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Satan will actually enter into Antichrist, who will be quote-unquote resurrected. And so a lot of people will have this delusion that, you know, Antichrist is the Messiah. But he's not. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the Messiah. So um, at, at his second coming, at the end of the seven years of tribulation, um, Jesus Christ will um, put down um, Antichrist and his forces at Armageddon. And then um, he will uh, resurrect all the people that have been believed um, in him apart from the body of Christ believers, all the other believers. And so um, they'll be resurrected and the people that believed in God during the tribulation um, because the tribulation will also be used by God to, you know, get rid of re uh, 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 rebel rebels. So he'll know exactly who really honestly does believe in him. Mm -hmm. So those people that did believe in him will <laughs> go into the kingdom. And the Jews will have glorified bodies, but the Gentiles will not. Because um, th at this time, Satan will be bound for th this thousand year period. And he'll be in the bottomless pit, chained. But then at the end of the 1,000 year, first part of Christ's reign, for his first 1,000 year reign, Satan will be let out. And one-fourth, I mean not one-fourth, uh, Gentiles from the four quarters, the four quarters of the earth. So if, if this is the earth, mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, I don't believe it's a pizza. <laughs> okay. Um, if we cut that orange into four quarters, mm -hmm. the Gentiles from those four quarters that ha uh, will be drawn away from, um, from believing that Jesus is the Messiah and follow Satan, all those multitude of Gentiles mm -hmm. will surround Jerusalem and fight against Jerusalem. And God from heaven will put down all of that rebellion with fire from heaven. Then, um, um, at that point, Satan will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And um, the Antichrist and the false prophets are, will already have been there. And then God will create, uh, have the great white throne judgment and judge all the lost people whoever lived in any dispensation, including uh, the dispensation of grace. So they'll all be judged on, and they'll be given different degrees of punishment and torment for all eternity, uh, where there'll be no rest day or night. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a terrible thing to uh, go have those people that 
go into the lake of fire, which was prepared for Satan and his angels. That was how God stopped the rebellion in heaven. He said, if any further angels follow Satan, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. And so that's how God stopped that rebellion originally. So this, this uh, lake of fire was cr created for Satan and his fallen angels. And, but anyone who has not believed what God has given them to believe will be thrown into that lake of fire at the, after the great white throne judgment. And um, it will be, you know, eternal torment. You don't want anybody to go there. That's why we, in the body of Christ, have to do all that we can to help other people to come into the body of Christ and also come into an un, not only to be saved from being lost, there's two kinds of lost. There's the lost of being without Christ and there's the lost of not understanding what God is doing today. Okay, and so um, there's a lot of people who don't understand in that the, God is doing the mystery today. And um, they are confused because they believe that the body of Christ began in Acts 2. Um, and they're following Peter instead of Paul. So, after all that, God will create the new, um, new heaven and a new earth. And um, actually, I said the other day that, um, you know, this is, um, so I think that's the day of God. The day of God is when he does that. Then we're going to the dispensation of the fullness of time, which is a dispensation um, where the, the, the time will have been fulfilled as far as, you know, any chance of having eternal life. The time will be no more opportunity for anyone to have eternal life. And so then those people who have eternal life will have their lives, you know, to the fullest with God. So that's basically the timeline. So, um, and I also wanted to Ooh. let you know, you know, where Satan goes. You know, he's doomed. And he, he knows that. So let's... Um, Move the orange so I don't have to smell the orange the whole time. <laughs> and um, we'll get going. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it's good to know these things and to have them down. Yeah. So, um, let's see what, um, what um, Abraham had to believe. Let's... Let's first take a look at Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the Abrahamic covenant. And then we'll look at what Abraham had to believe in order to be saved. So go to Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Um, who wants to read that? Okay. Okay, Patty, you go for it, girl. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Okay. So, um, if you um, circle all the I wills in mm -hmm. those three verses, there'll be four. Mm -hmm. And um, we found out um, that even the, the body of Christ, through Paul, we found out in uh, Romans 4, that we're also blessed through faithful Abraham. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, mm -hmm even though we are the body of Christ. But let's turn now to um, Genesis 15, 5 and 6. Maureen, can you read those? And we will see what Abraham had to believe in order to um, have God's imputed righteousness. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven 
and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Okay, so did Abraham believe that Christ will die for our sins, be buried and rise again? No. No, he believed that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's when he believed that, that's when he, he received God's imputed righteousness. So, um, God has never, it doesn't change. But his dealings with mankind changes. Mm -hmm. Let's um, see, let's go to uh, Job 37, 18. Uh, because I want you to see the sea of ice. Job 37, 18. Patty, you want to read that? Sure. Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Okay, so the molten looking glass is the sea of ice that separates the third heaven from um, the second. Okay, um... Let's see. Um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 12, 2. Uh, Maureen, can you read that? 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Okay. So, um, the third heaven is mentioned by Paul when he was caught up there um, after he had been stoned. Um, okay, so anyway, um, if in Genesis um, 6, you will see that um, both men and animals had corrupted themselves. Let's see. Um, well, he says that all flesh had corrupted um itself in Genesis 6 and um, 17 and said behold I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh where is where in is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in earth shall die because it had all corrupted itself even the the animals like I said So, um, let's go now to um, Romans 11, 11 through 12, and 12. Romans 11, 11, and 12. And we will just look at the stumbling at the, um, at the cross and the fall at, um, of the nation. So I'll read that. Romans 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? That's the nation of Israel. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So because of Israel's fall, salvation has now come to the Gentiles. And so that's different from Israel's rise, which will happen here. Through Israel's rise, the Gentiles during, that bless Abraham will um, come to salvation in the next dispensation. 
of the kingdom. So um, in verse 12 it says, Now if their fall, if, no, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So in the future God's going to, you know, make uh, Israel a, a wonderful uh, people that will um, be the priests and the kings to all people all over the world to um, be proclaim the king to them. But we are ambassadors for our head. So uh, then it says, For I speak unto you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So not until Paul did someone speak directly to the Gentiles. Um, and it's in Matthew 12, 31 and 32 where we find out about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, which was committed in Acts 7, 51 through 60. But we're not going to go there. Um, so the Israel had been given the law. Um, they had the word of God, the oracles, as it says in Romans 3, 1 and 2. Let's go there. Romans 3, Patty, 1 and 2. What advantage then? What and advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because there that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay, so Israel had the written word of God, and all the other nations didn't, okay? And, um, and also, it was, to the, it was Jews who wrote the word. It's another good thing to remember. Um, okay. Um, I was looking... Okay, so in Revelation 21.1, can you read that, Maureen? We're going to see that the, the sea is going to be removed. The, the barrier of the molten sea is going to be removed um, after um, the day of God. After the making of the new heaven and new earth. What verses? 21.1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is when the, that sea, that barrier between the third and the second heaven is removed. Because now there's only believers in the new heaven and new earth. And I believe that even the... Uh, darkness that we have now in in the, the second heaven is going to become light. Um, I think that darkness will be removed because we found out in Jude that angels don't like darkness; it slows them down. Oh. Okay, they they have chains of darkness. Oh. So um, so now I want to talk a little bit about Satan during the dispensation of grace, the mystery. Satan still opposes God. He doesn't mind if Peter is preached, but he hates for Paul to be preached. And, and I remember I said there are two ways to be lost. Mm -hmm. Lost without Christ or lost and not aware of what God is doing now. And so we're going to be talking about this today. He blinds the minds of the lost so they will not be saved and he blinds the saved um, from knowing the mystery which has now been revealed. Let's turn to Romans 16.25. Romans 16.25. Okay. We've, we've heard these verses so many times, but it's so important that, that people who are listening to us on Facebook and, and uh, know how to share this information 
and also know what the information is. So it says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, that's Paul's gospel, Paul's gospel was what? Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, according to the third day, according to the scriptures. But it's not only that. Paul's gospel is all of the 13 letters that he wrote. So it's the, the entire doctrine given to him. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So Paul preaches Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Not according to the fact that he's going to rule as the king of the Jews. Hmm. Okay, so it's a revelation of the mystery, which is the fact that we're going to, he's calling out a people to live in the heavenly places, which was kept secret since the world began. So what the Lord told Paul was kept secret from before the world began, before he created the heaven and the earth. Um, but now is made manifest so it's now been revealed but Satan is still trying to conceal it and we'll, we'll just stop there but I want to just go quickly to Acts 3.21 to see if Peter preached the same thing as Paul this that's another thing that we're going to be looking into today. So in Acts 3.21, Pat, Eddie, you want to read that? Okay. 3.21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Okay, so here it says that Peter is preaching what this was spoken of the mouth of the holy prophets since the world began. But Paul is telling us what was given to him that was kept secret since the um, world began. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there are two different things, mm -hmm. two different messages. Mm -hmm. One has been spoken by all the prophets since the world began, and then another message, complete other message to a different, a different message to a different audience, is given to Paul that had been kept secret since the world began. Satan doesn't want believers added to the church, which is the body of Christ. And he doesn't want anyone to know that Christ is forming a new group of people to live in the heavenly places. He that is in us, though, is greater than he who is in the world. That's what it says in 1 John 4, 4. And this is a transdispensational truth. That the spirit of the life of Jesus, which we're going to be talking about today, in us, is greater than Satan. As we began to discover in chapter 3, the Spirit of Christ in us is a major topic in this letter to the Corinthians. Okay, this is very key. The Spirit of Christ is something that Paul speaks about very much in many of his letters, including Romans. Okay? So, let's begin now. Um, let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and start with verse 1, Maureen. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay. So, um, Paul had said, um, he had just finished saying, if you look at um, the last verse in chapter 3, Mm -hmm. Get there. Want to read it? Okay. N no, no. He just said that. Um, okay. Go ahead, Patty. Go ahead and read it. But we all, with open face, beholding 
as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, he's saying that um, as we behold him in the glass, a mirror, his word, we are changed into his image by his Spirit. His Spirit uses his word to work in us. Our afflictions in this life often seem huge and unbearable, but God calls them light. Compared to eternity, they last only a fleeting moment. Staying focused on the eternal blessings we have can help us to endure our temporary sufferings. In this lesson, we will find out more about our power supply, the treasure we have in our earthen vessels. Paul was able to endure persecution and suffering because the life of Jesus was in him. We have a ministry and we're not going to lose courage that's faint. The power of Christ's Spirit in us makes us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, the Old Testament. Our outward man is perishing like that flower, but our inward man is being renewed day by day. So, God has made Paul and us able ministers of the New Testament according to the revelation of the mystery. We are under a new law that's in Romans 8.2. Maureen, can you read that? Romans 8.2, the new law that we're under. Where was that again? Romans 8 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. So we have the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So we're in Christ and Christ is in us. Okay. Um, that's the law that's working in us now. His righteous. Spirit in us does what the Old Testament law could not do. There is nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. The problem is with our sinful and weak flesh. We could not keep the law, um, that law, it, because it showed us our sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's what it says in Romans 3.20. We needed a Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, shed His blood, redeeming two groups of people. Those who will live in heaven and those who will live on earth. God has been merciful to both groups. Paul committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost at the stoning of Stephen. But God changed dispensations so that he could show mercy to Paul. That's what it says in 1 Timothy 12 through 14. Let's turn there. 1 Timothy 12 through 14. Um, Okay, so it says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who enabled me. Notice that word, enable. It is the spirit of the life of Jesus in us that enables us. Okay? For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord, was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. So, <clears throat> we can see there that... Could you just repeat one more time where you were reading from? 1 Timothy 12... Oh, 1. Uh, uh, 1, 12 through 14. 1, 12 through 14. There we go. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now, it says, um, if we go on a little bit further, he says, This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. This is 15 and 16. Okay. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first, Jesus Christ, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. 
So, Paul became the first person into the body of Christ, and he became our pattern that we should follow um, in this dispensation of grace. So, it's not only uh, to save sinners, but it's to save sinners um, for, you know, to live in a whole different place. We're not looking for the kingdom to come. We're looking for the church to go. Okay. So, Gentiles had no hope before the dispensation of the grace of God. In time past, Gentiles were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. So Paul says, we faint not. Faint not means to give up, not giving up. Faint not means not giving up, right? Um, yeah. And so we keep giving out the word of God plainly with enthusiasm, with zeal and gusto, right? Mm -hmm. We are soldiers, you know, we soldier on in the face of opposition, wanting others to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, which is 1 Timothy 2.4. We also want to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.9 There was a secret hid in God, just like that verse just told us, from the foundations of the world. Go to Ephesians 1.4. Patty, can you read that? Ephesians 1, 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay. So God decided that in Christ, in him, those people who believe in him would be able to join the body of Christ before the foundation of the world. He decided that Jesus was going to have this second group of people to live in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. So this um, verse really does not have anything to do with um, Calvinism or um, you know predestination. It's just that there was, you know, another destiny, another place um, for um, another group of people. And it was, God had made this decision before the foundations of the world, before the whole chart, of the whole, the whole timeline here. Okay, so Christ in us also, is also one of the mysteries given by the glorified Lord Jesus Christ to Paul. Okay, so this is another mystery. This whole thing with it, that we're learning about the life uh, of Jesus. So let's let's turn to uh, Maureen. Can you read Colossians one twenty seven? To whom God would make known. What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory? Okay, so this is this this fact that Christ is in us, the hope of glory, is another mystery given to Paul from the ascended Lord Jesus Christ in his ministry from heaven to the body of Christ. So he had an earthly ministry. To Israel now he has this uh, this other ministry to to us during the dispensation of grace. If we um, we'll find out that Paul is uh, the steward of the mysteries. There's more than one mystery in in the this mystery that we live in. Mm -hmm. 
But the major one is the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. But turn to 1 Corinthians 4.1. 1 Corinthians 4.1. Um, Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So, you know, since he's our pattern... We are also to be ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So we're going to share all the mysteries with other people as we have opportunity. And, you know, we need to travail with people because we were mixers before we came to understand the clear, you know, divisions in the Bible. We used to mix Peter and Paul. But, you know, we have learned that's like mixing oil and, oil and water. They don't mix. Law and Grace, Peter and Paul, they don't mix. Mm -hmm. So they're two separate things. And so now that we've come to this understanding, we are going to be ministers to others and help them. So we want others to have what we have, His Spirit and His increasing glory in them. Because we read... In that, well, Patty read for us that verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 18, which says, you know, we're going from glory to glory. Okay? And in, in we're becoming more Christ like. And uh, we're going to talk more about this in a little bit. But right now, Patty, will you read verse 2 in um, 2 Corinthians 4 2? But have re Real loud. loud. Oh, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So Paul and his co-workers are honest, not crafty. That, this is how we're going to be too. They handle God's word without deceit, revealing the truth of God's word to every man's conscience while God washes. Everyone must make a decision either to believe or reject what they hear when they hear what Christ has done and about the mystery given from Christ in heaven to us through Paul. Okay, let's turn to Ephesians 3.2. Um, Maureen, could you read Ephesians 3, 2? Sure. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. Okay, so the me there is Paul. So, the dispensation of the grace of God is given to Paul, to you, word, which is us in the body of Christ. You know, the believers today mm -hmm. are not spiritual Israel, we are the body of Christ. Uh, Maureen, could you please also read um, the next two verses in the Bible, 4.3 and 4.4. 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Mm -hmm. So they don't have eyes to, to see. They don't have ears to hear. Their, their minds have been blinded. Okay? So the gospel is the entire mystery doctrine given to Paul. If the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of God's grace is hid, it is hid to those who are lost who do not believe the gospel, the good news, and the doctrine given to Paul, because Satan has blinded their minds. Notice that it's their minds. The battle for salvation and dispensational biblical understanding is in the mind. The, okay. Satan mm -hmm. does not want the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, because he is God, to shine unto the lost. 
Okay. Okay, Satan doesn't want the lost to know that Jesus Christ already paid for all mankind's sins, past, present, and future, nearly 2,000 years ago. It's already been taken care of. All that any sinner has to do is receive it, to receive eternal life is to believe what Christ has already done. Upon believing the gospel, we become part of the body of Christ, counted as crucified, dead, buried, risen, and seated with Him in heaven. Our group inherits heaven, not the earth. So there are three things to believe, but only one is required for salvation. So number one, the one that's required for salvation is faith in Christ alone for salvation. When I say faith in Christ alone, I mean that the believer should not think that they have contributed one molecule to what Christ has done, because then they nullify their salvation. It was only what Christ has done. That is the offense of the cross. It's, it's, it, he did it all, and we didn't contribute one iota to what he did. Okay? And we so want in the flesh to say, I did something, you know. <laughs> but we have to believe 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, which is Christ died for our mm -hmm. sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He fulfilled the scriptures that said that he was going to do that. And he, he f even did it, he, he rose again the third day. It's very important. He rose exactly when he was supposed to. So the second thing that a person should believe is that they should have faith that God has preserved his word, as it says in Psalms 12, 6 and 7. And in English, that word is found in the King James Bible. So, um, and the third thing is that people have to believe in order to have, you know, a full understanding and not be lost. Is to have faith in Christ's heavenly ministry to the body of Christ through his Apostle Paul in the dispensation of grace. So this life is about where we spend eternity and what our rewards or job description will be when we get there. Satan is the the prince of the power of the air, as it says in Ephesians 2.2. 2. And he became the god of this world by default when Adam sinned. He was able to offer the kingdoms of the world to Christ in Matthew 4.8 and Luke 4.5. Let's go there. Matthew 4.8. Patty, can you read that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it because okay. I'm here. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So, you know, Satan had, was the god of this world. Mm -hmm. He was able to offer those kingdoms to Christ. Oh. But uh, Christ did not, uh, you know, he quoted scripture. And this is how we also overcome Satan. So we fight his lies with God's truth in the King James Bible. So Satan is happy when denominational churches avoid Paul's letters, mix law and grace, Peter and Paul, and mistakenly say that the body of Christ is spiritual Israel. Did Peter preach the same message as Paul? No. Peter preached the same gospel of the kingdom as Jesus preached. And that's in Matthew. Let's take a quick look over there. Matthew 4, 17. Matthew 4, 17. Um, Patty, you want to... Uh, is it your turn? Patty? Oh. Or Maureen's? I I, I'm here. Okay, go, Patty. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, and then, Patty, can you do um, um, 23 also, verse 23? And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, 
and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Okay, so he's preaching what gospel? Kingdom. Of the kingdom, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Patty, go, uh, go to Matthew 9.35. And this you should mark in your Bibles that you go from there to, to 9.35. Mm -hmm. Or at least have, you know, some cross-references there. Go ahead, Patty. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Okay, and then go to Matthew 19.28, Patty. 19.28. And then, um, Maureen, you can do Mark 1, 14 and 15. Matthew 19.28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay. It doesn't say judging the body of Christ, right? Right. Okay, so the twelve apostles will sit on twelve thrones in the kingdom and judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Um, Maureen, um, <laughs> go ahead with Mark 1, 14 and 15. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Okay, so what time was fulfilled? It was a time of Daniel's timeline that he gave to Israel in um, I, Isaiah, I mean, in Daniel... Um, Chapter uh, 12, 20, uh, 5, 20, 24 to 26, 27. Yeah, right in there. Seven. Okay, uh, Patty, can you read uh, Luke 9 2? And then, Maureen, you can read Luke 12, 31 and 32. Yeah. Nine two. Nine, two. Well, and, well, let me see. Um, let's, why don't you read one and two, Patty? Okay. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Okay. So his the twelve disciples um, were preaching what gospel? Of the kingdom. Of, oh, the, of God. Yeah, of of God. the kingdom of God, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, um, let's go to Luke twelve thirty one and 32, uh, Maureen. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Okay. Okay. Um, so the little flock, which was the believing remnant of Israel, those in the 120 in the upper room, were, are going to get the kingdom because the nation of Israel uh, blasphemed. And so God will give them the kingdom. So let's turn to Matthew 21.43. Matthew 21.43. Um, I'll read that. But it's good to look at it. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. That's the Pharisees and the scribes and the you know nation of, uh, of Israel's leaders. And given to a nation bringing forth the fruit thereof. So that nation is actually the little flock. That uh, we read about in Luke 12, 31 and 32. 
So Paul preached that God is forming the body of Christ to dwell in the heavenly places. God wants to populate both heaven and earth with true believers. He has put his dealings with the nation of Israel on hold and inserted the mystery, the yellow part, into prophecy. He interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery. Through Paul, Christ is declaring his ministry from heaven. His ministry on earth will resume after his ambassadors in the dispensation have been removed. Um, Patty, 2 Corinthians 4, 5. Let's keep a marker. I, I need to do that too. 2 Corinthians 4, 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So Paul and his co-workers represent Christ and preach him, not themselves, as they serve the Corinthians believers. And we are going to do the same. We are representing Christ, mm -hmm. and we're not, you know, and we're serving other believers in the body of Christ. We want them to be edified. Um, verse 6, Maureen. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. So the same God who said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3, has enlightened Paul and his co-workers' hearts to give them a brilliant, clear understanding of what Christ from heaven is doing now. Jesus is Creator Jehovah God, who spoke and commanded the light to shine out of darkness. The second person of the Godhead is the Word of God, the spokesman. So that's um, we find that out in John 1, 1 through 4, and Colossians 1.16. Um, let's go there. John 1, 1 through 4. Um, do you want to take that, Patty? And then uh, Maureen, why don't you take Colossians 1.16? But you can look with us if you want. John 1, 1 through 4, Patty. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Good. Okay, so in Christ is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And it's also the life that, you know, a believer has is he, he, he's the light. Mm -hmm. Patty, why don't you read verse 9 too? Okay. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Okay. So every human being has a little bit of light at, mm -hmm. in their life mm -hmm. from God to have an opportunity to believe in God. Um, Maureen... Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Okay, so we have been cre created by him and for him, for his glory. Mm -hmm. So let's go back now to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And Patty, why don't you read the next verse? It's 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Okay. So... We have a treasure in our earthen vessels, okay? In, yeah, so we're going to find out exactly what that treasure is. So Paul will define what that treasure is and the earthen vessels in 
the next few verses. Go down to verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus, that's what the treasure is, might be manifested in our mortal flesh. So our mortal flesh um, is what the earthen vessel is. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so our resource, okay, the treasure is the life of Jesus in us. The earthen vessel is our mortal bodies, and our resource or power supply is the life of Jesus in us. Go to Colossians 2, 3. Maureen, can you read that? Colossians 2, 3. And don't forget, you're going to have these notes available on God's Secret Facebook page, and also along with the video um, that we're doing right now. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, so see there? Um, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge is is another mystery. Okay, um, Maureen, can you read verse 2 too? That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. And then third. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, so in that verse just above is the mystery of God. So we have the, tr and, and, and of the Father, and of Christ. So it's the triune God mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so we have God the Holy Ghost, God the Father, and God Christ. And in God is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And we found out last week that the whole God is in us, remember? Yeah. And so um, this, is, this, is, this treasure that we have in us is, uh, you know, the entire Godhead is in us. It's, it's amazing to think about. Now, in Israel's program, the treasure was his people. Let's turn to Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Patty, you want to read those? Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Okay. So, in prophecy, the treasure was not the life of, of God in us, mm -hmm. but his people, uh, Israel. Now, therefore, if ye will obey the vo thy voice indeed, and keep my command, co covenant. My, uh, 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 will oh, my, obey oh, oh, my I'm, voice. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, so, you know, if, if, okay, mm -hmm. notice there was an if-then principle. Mm -hmm. it, under prophecy, there's an if-then, uh, you know, uh, uh, system. Mm -hmm. So, if they obey, if they do this, then they'll be the treasure, and then they'll be um, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay, so there, it's conditional, but in the dispensation of grace, Christ has done everything for us, and God is dispensing grace now. You know, mm -hmm. um, He's not mad at us. Mm -hmm. He He loves us, and He's offering grace, mercy, and peace to anyone who will believe His Son. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's go back to verse 8, Maureen, uh, 4, 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Okay, so Paul says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. On the one hand, Paul's three-year ministry in Ephesus ended in one day with a mob revolt. On the other hand, he doesn't want to lose um, other, you know, ministries. 
So Paul is writing to those in Corinth who hold with him to give them ammunition and to refute those who speak against Christ's ministry to them through him. Turn to 5.12. This is so key to get this. 2 Corinthians is given to that part, those part that acknowledged Paul as their apostle, so that they can have ammunition to refute those who don't accept Paul as their apostles. So 5.12 says, um, For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearances and not in heart. So, Paul is saying that he's speaking to those so that they can speak on Paul's behalf to those people who are, you know, are glorying in appearances and not in uh, heart. So, uh, be, you know, so that's important to know. God, and this is also our ammunition. Second Corinthians is our ammunition to help other people to understand why Paul is our apostle. He's not the 13th apostle. Mm -hmm. He's the one apostle to the one body of Christ. So, but because Paul knew the truth, is the truth of Christ, he's not distressed. Mm -hmm. Paul may have been puzzled about, so, okay, that mean, that's what, um, he may have been puzzled about what God was doing, but he trusted him and did not lose hope. So he was troubled on the side of what happened in Ephesus. He's troubled about what's going on in Corinth. He's being persecuted, you know, all the time by the enemy. So he says, we are perplexed. So the perplexed is the puzzled, but not in despair. Paul was puzzled about, you know, what God was doing, but he trusted him and did not lose hope. Okay, I can, I can cross that off. I said that twice. Okay, we'll cross that off. Okay. So, verse 9, Penny. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So, Paul was persecuted by the unbelieving Jews and the idol-worshipping pagans he was trying to save. But he knew that God was with him, so he wasn't forsaken. Mm -hmm. He was cast down, but not destroyed. Paul felt like he and his friends had been thrown down like in wrestling. Mm -hmm. But he was still alive. Mm -hmm. Paul felt low, but he would never give up. He's never going to say, uncle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Verse 10, um, Maureen. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Okay. Paul and his friends remind themselves daily that they died with Christ. He paid for our sins in full. And as the perfect sacrifice on Calvary, so now we can live with uh, live a new life with him as our resource. Let's turn to Romans 6, 2 through 4. Romans 6, 2 through 4. <clears throat> and this shows how we identify Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And it's important to notice that there's no water here. Um, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we're not supposed to live in sin anymore because we're dead know ye not well our old sin nature is dead that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So we have this new 
spirit of life in us. The spirit of life of Jesus Christ is in us. And we identified with his death, burial, and resurrection as we were baptized into his death. Identified with his death. And it was all spiritual. There was no water there. Okay. He lives out his life through the believer. Turn to Galatians 2.20. <clears throat> okay, I'll read this one. I am crucified. When you can read with me if you want. All right, tell me when you're there. Let's read it all together. Okay, you ready? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, see how we are crucified with Christ? Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We have the life of Christ in us. And um, this uh, goes along with that Colossians 1.27. The, you know, the mystery of... Um, you know, um, of the hope of glory, Christ in us. Okay, so this also is the mystery of godliness. Turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16. Okay, so this is a mystery um, that was revealed to Paul. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, that's in our flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, the angels are watching us, we have been justified, the angels are watching us, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received into glory. So we're going to be received into glory. When, um, you know, we're after the rapture. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. So his life working um, in us is made uh, known through us. So it's being manifested. His life is being manifested to the world through the believer. Christ is revealing himself, okay, through the rightly dividing believers. When we exchange these clay pots for our glorious eternal spacesuits, His life will shine out of us. Our celestial bodies will glow with varying degrees of brightness as we learn in 1 Corinthians 15, 38-41. Um, Patty, can you read verse 11? Oh, in uh, in okay. 2 Corinthians. Oh, okay. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Notice that the phrase, life also of Jesus, is repeated twice, but the first time it says body, and the next time it says mortal flesh. So in verse 10, it says... Um, Life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. And then verse 11 it says, Life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So, um, the Bible has its own built-in dictionary. Mm -hmm. Body equals mortal flesh. That is also what the earthen vessels are. And this is going to be part of the answer in our homework when we get there. Okay? Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we are dead to sin but alive unto God. We have His life in our mortal bodies right now, which is being made manifest to the world. Um, verse 12. Whose turn is it to read? Maureen? So then death worketh in us, but life in you. With a little note of sarcasm, Paul says death is working in us, but life in you. But it's also true. Mm -hmm. 
Because remember, they're baptized into the death of Christ. Oh, yeah. uh, when we're dead to ourselves, we, we are, our old sin nature was crucified, but the divine nature now lives in us. Um, they were willing to die to self and allow Christ to use their bodies so the Corinthians could live. Romans 12.1. Patty, can you read Romans 12.1? 12, 1. 12, 1. Okay. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So, we um, he begs or implores them to present their bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. So, we're going to live, um, you know, we're going to allow Christ to live through us. And when we do that, we can be holy and acceptable to God. And this is our reasonable service now, because of all that Christ has done, done for us. Okay, so verse 13, Patty. Verse 13, 413. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So Paul says, we share the same spirit of faith. Whenever Paul says, it is written... We look to find out where it is written in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's in Psalm 116.10. Oh. Maureen, can you read that? Mm -hmm. Paul has been afflicted, but because he believes the truth, he is speaking to them. And we're going to find out more about this afflicted in uh, when uh, Maureen reads Psalm 116.10. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Okay, so see, Paul was afflicted, but he's speaking to them in Corinth. Some of his affliction was from them, right? So, um, um, Maureen, you want to, uh, Patty, you want to read the next verse? 14. 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So we know that God who raised up Christ will also raise up us by Jesus and present us with you, as it says in Romans 8.11. And after the judgment seat of Christ for the service done in this body... Christ will present us to the Father, as it says in Colossians 3, 4, and um, also in 2 Corinthians 5, 1. So let's look at those verses. Romans 8, 11. We only have four verses left, and we'll be done. Um, so it, Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. And so, and then, um, Maureen, can you read Colossians 3, 4? And Patty, 2 Corinthians 5, 1, which is right here. Um, Colossians 3, 4, let's all look at that together. Okay. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Okay, so... After the judgment seat, we're going to be presented to the Father in, um, you know, in glory. Patty, 2 Corinthians 5, 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Okay, so instead of calling them... Um, you know, earthen vessels here, he's calling them a, a tabernacle. Oh. And so when this tabernacle or tent that we're living in is dissolved, then we have a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. So where are we going to spend eternity? Heaven. In heaven, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be in heaven for eternity. That's where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. We're not coming, you know, I remember the day that I found out that I wasn't coming back. 
Uh, it was a shocker. And we're going to talk more about that next week. Uh, verse 15 of um, chapter 4, Maureen. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Okay, notice it says redound mm -hmm. and not rebound. Mm. Okay, redound is to give back with greater force. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Paul says we are doing what we're doing for your sakes so that the abundant grace that God has shown us will return with greater force to God's glory by everyone's thanksgiving. We are so grateful that God had a plan to save us from our sins and God had a direct plan for the Gentiles in the dispensation, in this dispensation, apart from Israel and apart from law, so when we get, when we're presented to the Father, there's going to be so much glory and thanksgiving happening because of what Christ has done. So that's when you know the it will just echo mm -hmm. and increase in mm -hmm. in in. in, in uh, you know, thanksgiving to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ at, in, in heaven. Uh, verse 16, Maureen. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Okay, so the cause here is wanting to give glory to God as the body of Christ. Because of our glorious eternal future with Him, we faint not. We remain steadfast, diligent, hard-working, bold soldiers for Christ, wanting as many as possible to be saved and become body of Christ members, and to come to the knowledge of the truth of what God is doing now. And our outward man, is our physical bodies, is dying. But our inward man, our soul and our spirit, is being renewed daily by his transforming life-giving word being applied to our hearts and minds by the living spirit of Jesus in us. Verse 17, Patty. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So the Lord Jesus Christ had, um, had to suffer greatly he bore our sins in his own body and died for our salvation so that believers could receive his righteousness. This is why those in Abraham's bosom in Luke 16.22 had to wait till the redemption of his blood was complete and accepted as demonstrated by his resurrection. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, as it says in Hebrews 9.22. So, um, at, in Romans 3.25, it, sh it shows that, um, you know, let's go there. Romans 3.25, those who, who were in Abraham's bosom was redeemed, were redeemed. That's what it says in Romans 3.25. Okay, it says... Um, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So God had this plan worked out so that for the remission of sins that were past for those in Abraham's bosom to be given his righteousness. And then in this Next verse, he talks about the body of Christ. But um, we're, we covered that last week. So, um, let's turn to Hebrews 9.22. Well, I'll, I, I have it memorized. Oh, okay. <laughs> For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Okay, so blood had to be shed. Christ had to shed his blood. So, the Spirit ministers righteousness. That's what it said... Um, in uh, 3 9, 2 Corinthians 3 9. For it, okay, look in, in 2 Corinthians 3 9 with me. 
So we're saying now that the Spirit ministers righteousness. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Paul also suffered many things in his body, as it says in Colossians 1.24. Um, remember it says um, that he suffered many things, and we, we saw that last week. I just had seven clueless believers who do not rightly divide the Word of God request to have their names removed from my email after more than two years of trying to help them to come to the truth of what Christ is doing now through Paul. And so um, what we are going through is light afflictions that only last a moment. Turn to Romans 8.18. Uh, who wants to read Romans 8, 18? I'll read it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So, the little light afflictions. I know many people have much, have very difficult afflictions during this lifetime. But they're going to work even more glory in those people that are going through those real hardships, you know, their uh, light afflictions are a little harder, okay? It's because it said so in verse 17, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. So God is working in those people more powerfully, to, uh, and it's going to work out for their glory. So in chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, Paul says, okay, um, 12, 9, he says, we will, um, so as we will learn, he says that God told him his grace is sufficient, for his strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul says that's what he wants. He wants God's strength in him. That the work that we have allowed Christ to do through us will bring glory to God. And each believer has a different life to live and a different afflictions to endure. The last mm -hmm. verse. Patty, you want to read the last verse? Is it your turn? Or is it Maureen's? Yeah, I think it's Maureen. Okay, Maureen, <laughs> you, you go. You go, girl. But we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our confidence is not in what we see, but in what we don't see. The things that we see are temporary. But what we don't see is eternal. We don't see, you know, all the glory that we're going to have with Christ in the heavenly places right now. But we dare to believe what God has says about us in our future in His Word. That's how we know what's going to happen. So let's turn to our homework, page 189. Okay. And this is only going to take a second and we'll be, we'll be done. Okay, so, um, okay, read 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10, and we did. What does verse 7 call our bodies? Earthen vessels. Good. In what way are we like clay pots? We're dirt. Yes, very good, Betty. Uh -huh. We're made from the earth. We're made from the earth. Yeah, and we from crack. the dirt. And we crack. Yeah. yeah. That's another good one. Which more accurately states what these vessels verses show? Circle one. A. God miraculously kept Paul from persecution and suffering. Or B. Paul was able to endure persecution and suffering because the life of Christ was in him. B. 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 Okay, very good. All right. What is happening to our outward bodies? Perishing. Perishing. Good. Um, but verse 16 says that our inward man is renewed. renewed. 
Day by day. Good. What do we read? Okay. Verse. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work for us a far more etern exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, seen. but at the things which are not seen. seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporal. but the things which are not seen are eternal. eternal. Perfect. Okay, let's let's stop there and let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, in Jesus' name we come before you, and we just thank you that our faith and our trust is in what you say about us, um, and not in what the world would say. And we pray, Lord, that you would um, use these um, little Bible studies on Facebook and on YouTube to help many people to come to be not lost, not lost to salvation, and not lost to what you're doing in uh, the world right now, as you are forming the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace through what our Apostle Paul has told us in his uh, letters, Romans to Philemon. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.